Well, right now, I don't think many academic laboratories or industrial laboratories are even aware of DIY bio or uh, DIY biology labs, community laboratories. I think we're starting to get on their radar system. For the most part, they, you know, they see it as people just kind of tinkering around with biology, not really doing anything very sophisticated or anything with any kind of impact. I think that could change in the coming years. DIY Bio is a movement of, I would say, makers that are interested in exploring biology and biotechnology outside of your traditional uh, laboratories, universities, or companies. So we first got involved with them when I met Jason Bobe, one of the co-founders of DIYBio.org, and we found the, the whole movement um, fascinating from a couple of aspects. One, the potential innovation of people being able to explore biology and biotechnology um, and things that potentially could come out of, say, a garage, for instance. Because we saw that innovation potential and also the educational potential of, of this type of community, we also realized that there were some biosafety um, issues that the community could potentially need help with, um, as well as some potential governance strategies that could sort of help the community thrive. For the history of bugs, you have to go back to 2010. My day job is I, t I teach uh, at a community college and I had some students come up to me and said they wanted to uh, participate in this iGEM competition, which I knew about but just really sort of in the periphery. I wasn't, you know, intimately involved with that. And so I said sure, I would, you know, supervise the team and they actually had trouble recruiting enough people. Somehow it came up that we should reach out to the DIY community and, and so we did. I see the DIY movement as significant um, on, I would say, two major fronts. One is an educational potential. Bugs, for instance, it's a convening place for people to be able to teach about biotechnology, synthetic biology, and other types of biological experiments um, to people that would not have had access to that. So we offer uh, two, two types of courses. We call the first one Build a Bug. They are typically five sessions. Uh, we take kind of a project-based approach. They usually involve some sort of DNA modification and isolation and then, you know, reintroduction back into a cell to change the behavior of that cell. I'm some time away from retirement. I just don't remember, just don't know when. And, and I'm looking for intellectual stimulation. I'm interested in biology. I'm interested in electronics and I'm interested in computers, and Bugs has all four. We've got a 3D printer, we've got the lab here where we're doing genetic engineering, and then we've had one of the a grad students from one of the local colleges talk to us about bioinformatics, which is a way of modifying the genomes, which we can then use in here to do some, some use, useful work. So for instance, we have a group that's working on developing or modifying off-the-shelf printers to print biological structures, you know, incorporating different kinds of cells into different kinds of matrices. And when I got here, I realized that the diversity in the background of people and the knowledge they bring to the table is phenomenal. I mean, you really can engage in different ways and, and attack problems from different perspectives. One of the things that I'd like to, to do, or my work in bugs in the capacity, I guess, of bringing science to students um, and bringing it to, to them in a way where they can do science in a way that they may not be able to do it in the classroom. Previously, the challenges facing the DIY bio labs were issues of proving to the scientific and the policy community that they're both responsible with the biotechnology and also using it skillfully and, and safely. At this point, they've far surpassed uh, those challenges. The challenge now, it seems, is finding the right funding for these labs to continue and to flourish. We talked about, you know, should we look for, you know, foundation funding and I actually even wrote a, a short little proposal to the National Science Foundation to see whether or not they'd, f you know, fund this. I realized if we, if we kept on going that route, we'd never get anything established. Just made a decision that, you know, we'd fund, we'd get it started, you know, out of, the, you know, using our own money. We've just recently uh, gotten our first foundational grants and we have members who pay membership fees and, you know, picking up a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there is how we keep the, the doors open and the lights on. So DIY Bio is happening now. One of the, the major reasons is because the cost of 
of being able to do these types of experiments has dropped so, um, so rapidly. So it enables people to actually um, acquire some of the equipment and the materials to be able to do this type of uh, exploration. The equipment came from a couple of different sources. So we had some, uh, uh, some professors that were retiring their labs and we were able to go in there and kind of pick up odds and ends. There was a large company that was going out of business. We were able to go in there and basically pick up all the things that we want. Public perception, uh, you know, like what are these people doing? Are they, you know, do you, do you got a meth lab, you know, set up there? Are they creating, you know, I mean, this is this is something that comes out all the time about bioterrorism, biosafety. Are they creating these, you know, dangerous microbes and things like that? So I think that, you know, what we've tried to do is communicate with the public and just, you know, this is not what we're about. We want to make sure that we have policies and. Uh, procedures in place that that can't happen or won't happen. The DIY bio community has done a lot to mitigate most of those concerns. They've put together uh, codes of conduct. They have mostly agreed to work in what's called biosafety level one labs. Uh, they don't work with human pathogens. And I think because they've put that much work into mitigating these risks. I don't think that they want to do anything to cause more concern. However, the technology itself is progressing rapidly. The risk isn't the DIY bio community. The risk is what, where the technology might go. We need ordinary smart people involved with it. It needs to be democratized because the technology is so powerful. And places like bugs, are really the only place, only place where that is kind of coalescing and happening is involvement of ordinary people in, in this incredibly powerful technology.